This video will discuss the steady state approximation in chemical kinetics. So let's assume we have a reaction here going from our reactant R to the product P. Let's assume that this complex reaction is composed of two elementary steps. Step one is R goes to I with a rate constant of K1. Step two is I goes to P with a rate constant of K2, I being the intermediate in this reaction. We're going to assume that at T equals zero, that the concentration of our reactant equals R naught, and that the concentration of the intermediate end product is equal to zero. All right, so let's look at some different cases here. So if K1 is much, much greater than K2, what we'll have is that the intermediate will build up as K1 is very fast, waiting for K2 to happen, and then slowly over time, all of that intermediate will convert to product. Alternatively, if K1 is much, much slower than K2, what will happen is any, any intermediate that is produced will instantly be consumed to product. So our intermediate is just waiting to be produced to instantly go to product. So any intermediate that is produced is instantly consumed into product. So what we can use in a lot of cases where we have complex derivations that occur based off of these rate laws is we're going to get a simplification that helps us, which is called the steady state approximation. So the steady state approximation is going to be the approximation that the derivative of the concentration of an intermediate with respect to time is equal to zero. This will allow us to get the concentration of that intermediate in many complex mechanisms which will be needed in order to get the rate law for the product. Okay, so in this case, we're, we're going to see that the concentration or the change in the concentration of the intermediate with respect to time is equal to, well, it gets produced in reaction one, so that's K1 times the concentration of the reactant. And it gets consumed in reaction two, so that's minus K2 times the concentration of the intermediate. And according to the steady state approximation, that's equal to zero. So since this is equal to zero, we can solve for I. So the concentration of our intermediate is equal to K1 times the concentration of the reactant divided by K2. So we can see that from this uh, type of expression here that our rate law for the reactant dr dt is going to be well, the only thing that can change the concentration of the reactant is consuming it in reaction one. So dr dt equals minus k1 times r. So that means that our concentration of r as a function of time due to this first order dependence is going to be r naught times e to the minus k1t. All right, we saw that our concentration of i as a function of time is going to be equal to well, we have K1 times R over K2. Here's our equation for R. So the concentration of I equals K1 R0 over K2 times E to the minus K1T. So according to the steady state approximation, the derivative of this should be zero over time. So let's take the derivative of this. So that's a constant, 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 E to the minus K1, and then T is our time. So d dt of e to the minus k1t is minus k1 e to the minus k1t. So di dt is going to be minus k1 squared r naught k2 times e to the minus k1t. And this is supposed to equal 0. So when is this going to equal 0? <clears throat> so e to the minus k1t, um, that's not going to equal 0 until t is very large. And that's the trivial case, because at t equals infinity, uh, we don't have any reactant left to consume. So at finite times, what makes this equal to zero? So this is not zero, so that means that this has to be zero. So how do we make this zero? Well, we could do that by making our initial reactant concentration zero, but that would be trivial because then we wouldn't have any reaction to, to, to consume. There'd be no reaction if there was no initial reactant. All right, similarly, uh, the only other thing in the denominator that can make this zero is k1. So our steady state approximation here is valid if k2 is much, much greater than k1 squared times the concentration of r naught. 
So this means that <clears throat> we must have the type of situation that we described here, where any intermediate that we produce is basically instantly consumed to P. So if we have a diagram of, of this over here, if K2 is much, much greater than K1, then as our reactant goes down, we get a little bit of intermediate, but it's basically all initially consumed going down. So we get basically a flat curve with respect to zero, giving us that steady state approximation where our intermediate is constant over time. Alternatively, if K1 and K2 are competitive, as the reactant decreases and gets consumed, we're going to get a little bit of a buildup of the intermediate, and our product is going to take some time before it starts uh, being produced as we get a maximum and intermediate. So here would be a situation where the steady state approximation is less valid, where our rates are competitive, and in the alternative case that we didn't talk about, as K1 gets bigger and bigger, this becomes a less and less valid approximation to use.